I'm Kes. Uh, started the Flying Goat last year, October, so it's been about five months, so we're fairly new. The space is a space. It's a space to be. It's uh, not a lot of preconceived notions are welcomed here. It's sort of an open space kind of thing. The path we have chosen to go on the journey is about creating something wholesome, sustainable. At the same time, try and make it accessible to the people who appreciate it. The flying goat is an amalgamation of things. It's, it's, it's a combination, it's a combining of various different thoughts, ideologies, people, uh, concepts. We are open through the day. We are not a night space. Come, pick a book, read in the garden all day with one cup of coffee. Just be by yourself. This is where, this is what space is. It's a place to be where you don't have to dress up. You don't have to put on an act. You can just be yourself, be by yourself in your own little corners. I personally believe that everything, food, drink, each is an individual journey, which if you take the opportunity to take someone on, is an experience in itself. It's not just a meal or it's not just a cafe or it's not just a cocktail. Like, if you actually put thought into it, as a consumer, you can actually experience things. It adds a sustainable angle in terms of produce because you're looking at more of a seasonal produce, what actually grows in specific seasons and the food actually sings at that time. You know, there's a little bit of song and journey which happens through that when you give it the right time to eat something. So there was a terminology I have recently come across is conscious consumption. It means you be aware of things. You, I'm not saying we're a hundred percent sustain, like you know, plastic free, or we're not a hundred percent anything. I'm not trying to be a hundred percent everything because it is not possible. You cannot say that I get a zero waste enterprise. There is going to be waste. There is certain amount which does come in. But what can you do to aim to reduce that? If you make conscious efforts, it may not be the thing which takes you across the uh, finish line. It's not the end, it's not the solution, but it's a part of it. Like there's this phrase, right? Every drop makes the ocean. In our reflection of that same ideology, the food menu is seasonal. In the farm, we also grow a lot of uh, our local greens. So we don't try and achieve vegetables, uh, fruits and fleshy veg. We aim at herbs, garnishes, uh, leafy veg, things we can incorporate in our salads. So you get the freshest of ingredients in that sense. Hello, my name is Akshay. I handle the beverage program at the Flying Goat Cafe. Let's have a tour of the garden and see what things we are trying to grow over here. So the produce that we have over here is mainly that are native to India or farewell to Indian soil. We try not to do any genetically modified crops which affects the quality of the soil or other crops. So these are called Bimli. It's a local name uh, that people call over here. It comes into family of gooseberries. It has, it tastes like a very much like gooseberries, but it has a very sweeter note than that of a gooseberry. And the shape, as you can see, it's a bit longer than what your regular gooseberries are. It grows on this tree over here. It's more of a rainy season fruit because this plant requires a lot of water. But yes, with abundance of water, like a good, uh, if you water it daily, you get a good amount of uh, bimlis coming in. So the next plant we are seeing here is called a peperomia. Uh, comes in a family of peppers. It must be growing wildly around your house or in your flower pots. But most probably you will be throwing it away thinking it's a weed. But apparently you can eat this. It's very nutritious, very fibrous thing. Uh, should be eaten raw, you can't cook it, but it goes great in your salads. The feeds you see here uh, gives a very slight pepperish flavors, which is goes very well with your salads or your side dishes. Maybe you can just use it as a garnish for your pastas or any kind of soup that you're serving around with it.
the flowers we are seeing here are called rosellas. It's something similar to that of hibiscus, but a very citrusy flower. You can dry this and use it as a coloring agent for your foods, which gives out a very bright, bright red color. People usually tend to make teas out of this. Oh, when you sip it with hot water, it tends to lose its red color and it gives a lot of sour taste to your teas. So since with this new era of coming where we are drinking a lot of flower based teas, this is something people prefer a lot to drink. So the next plant we are seeing, it's called the Brahmi. It's a Ayurvedic leaf used as a cure for people dealing with Alzheimer's, stress disorders, or hypertension, anxieties. There are two varietals that comes which looks more like a umbrella and one which is more perennials. It's a perennial plant. It grows more in southern wetlands of India, Australia and European subcontinent. Basically, we're going to be doing a food experience and a bar experience about native ingredients, local ingredients, things you find in your market, how you can, at least from the bar perspective, how can you make a cocktail, which is kick-ass at home, using these ingredients, keeping it simple, but allowing the flavors to play and speak for themselves. With the food, we're looking at the same extensions of using local ingredients, but that extension also comes into food creation space, the uniqueness. Creating a salad at the end of it with all these different elements is understanding each element is quite important. We have this uh, one salad, which is uh, three salads in one. It's an extension of uh, the tomato carpaccio as a seasonal thing, uh, which is one. Then we have a garden fresh salad, uh, which is basically whatever is growing in the garden. We get it fresh, chop it up, make a simple salad with a simple dressing. That's what it is. It's not, it's not worldly complicated. And then the third element is a fried garden weeds. Not the very healthy aspect of a salad, but eh, it's okay. You, you've got to give and take. So one of the bigger thoughts is that the world is in need of saving of sense. I mean, I'm not going to be the savior of the world kind of thing. I'm not even trying to be that. Uh, it's impossible. For me to do it because I don't have scientific knowledge, etc., etc. I'm a little person in a little corner of Goa. I'm a nobody, and I'm happy being a nobody. But I, I am of the belief that environmental change to be able to, let's say, in about 50, 60 years, to actually have Goa still exist and not be submerged under the water, uh, work needs to be done. And sure, you have big guys doing big projects. And then you have people at home. But there has to be someone like in between, like at least from my experience of the working in a little bit of cafes, again, I am not saying that nobody's doing anything. It's not like we are the pioneers of things. But we need to make it more of a common habit. It needs to become something which it's not like, which makes a place unique. It's supposed, it should become a mandate. It should become something that every place doesn't really, you can't force someone to make a change. They should be wanting to do it themselves. It's sometimes we have to just go back a little bit, take a step back and just look at the bigger picture, see what we're trying to achieve, what is our impact and consequence of the actions we do. We have to look at it. We have to introspect a little bit to see this. And that is the drive here. To have in a space where you can think. It, it needs to make sense. It needs to be there for a reason. And that's what it is. And extensions of this taking this forward seeing what where it goes my dream is to have various things i would love to explore the aspects of natural construction uh, using mud using lime because that's another whole world uh, you don't really want me to get started on that uh, but that is something which has interested me as well i want to have an actual goat farm one day call it the flying goat have a little goat farm there have have the ability to grow my own vegetables, look at it as an overarching sustainable movement. You'll see the garden, it's green. And the thought is that we want to bring back the snakes, we want to bring back the birds, have those little things flying around, like it is what it is.